everybody. Welcome back to Studio Spaces here from Self-Isolation. This is the third or fourth one that we're doing. I'm Jane Carrillo. Joining me as always, Todd Waller. Hello. How y'all doing? <laughs> we're, we're coming to you again. This is the first time you're tuning in. A lot of people are turning to the internet in this time of need, as am I. We're part of Studio 48, which is a team of agents at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Snyder & Company Realtors in beautiful Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, where everyone's trapped inside, as we are. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. No, good. After you, I insist. So. <laughs> it is. It is a beautiful day. However, this is the second of April, uh, and if you are in Southeast Michigan, um, you're watching some very blue skies and a big bright ball of something has been going through the sky today. So, um, it's been good. You, you you can't beat this right now. I, you know, it's it's one thing to be trapped inside when it's gloomy and just dark. Yep. And that this is a day I wouldn't mind staying at home and growing all that much. To be totally honest with you. Yeah, work work from the front porch or the back deck and wave at neighbors as they're walking by or something along those lines for sure. <laughs> just keep keep your six foot pole out as they walk. Just keep it. You know, I you know along those lines, Dan. I've heard that uh, one of those pool noodles, right? So those styrofoam pool noodles that people will have when the, when the weather gets a little bit warmer, uh, the pool noodles are perfect, uh, almost. So like two of those, and that's a perfect six foot distance. So I don't know anybody who's walking around with two pool noodles on them, but if you need to, there you well, go. Hi. Here's the thing. That's a that's a two sided approach. On one thing, people are staying away from you. Because you're poking them with pool noodles, but they're not getting that close. Because they see just somebody walking around holding two pool noodles, second of April, sixty degrees outside. Hey, you know, it 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 takes a special kind of well special. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge. If you want to walk around with two pool noodles, that's great. I'm gonna keep my distance. That, that's a very good point, Dad. Very very good point. Oh my goodness gracious, that's hilarious. <laughs> so. Um, you're doing well. I mean, we see you physically. You you look like you're nice and healthy, and you're enjoying yourself there. How's the family doing? <laughs> Family's doing well and staying healthy. I take it. Uh, every, everybody's doing well. We're we've kind of adapted into you know it's it's kind of like watching moles or squirrels. Like <laughs> the the house feels entirely empty. Yeah. Uh, it, dur during the day when everybody's working and just it's like no one's here at all yep yep <laughs> it wasn't like that even before the self-isolation oh my goodness well and and here at casa waller uh we're 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 still you know quarantined in together um fortunately my my operating room uh wife nurse has the ability to work from home uh when she doesn't have any cases and most of her cases have been canceled um, so we're, we've got that going on and the, the teenagers running around the house. Well, we got varying degrees of some online homework, some musical practice, a lot of video game playing, a lot of reading going on. So we're, we're doing well, but I got to tell you the, the home cooked meals. Oh my gosh. It's been amazing. So I'm looking forward to tonight because tonight is uh, steak and baked potato. I'm really Ooh. looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, uh, it, it's fun to talk about and catch up, quite frankly, to see how uh, each other's uh, families are doing. I know the, the folks in uh, Studio 48, they are also uh, nice and healthy, doing well, uh, bearing down, uh, through, bearing up, if you will, through uh, what's, what's going on. Um, and we're finding different ways, to, obviously, to, to stay sane and, and keep productive. Uh, one of those things that I've been impressed with, Dan, is uh, every week, uh, you're pulling out data these days uh, having to do with uh, listings in the Washtenaw County area. And, um, and you're pulling those right off of the Ann Arbor Area Board of Realtors MLS, correct? Well, what, what's happening here is some people go for walks to stay sane. Some <laughs> people are trying video games or, or working online, just some sense of normalcy. And I turn to data. Yep. It helps bring me peace, even if it's not the prettiest data. And yeah. so I... I'm every day to the this is this my uh, my therapist is going to want to hear this and have a conversation about this. <laughs> I go put this data every single morning and mm -hmm. plug it into a spreadsheet I set up, and we just get some new some new information on there. 
And we talked about this last week. I pulled the data. We haven't had a lot of time yet since the stay at home order. We really only had one week mm -hmm. of good data. Yep. And daily graph, because listings drop off precipitously on weekends, it's kind of funky. Daily data isn't good to look at. It doesn't tell you a story. Mm -hmm. Weekly data does. And mm -hmm. this week's data tells a hell of a story. It, it really does. Are you ready for me to share the screen here? Yeah, pop that guy up. All right, let's do that. Already should be showing up here. There you go. Yeah. So uh, you'll notice the yellow line, that's 2020. And we have a lot fewer listings than we did at this point, uh, hitting the market every week in yeah. uh, 2019. That I, I want to say, my own, my own prediction, that's going to somewhat stabilize there. We, we're seeing about 10 listings a day mm -hmm. coming up. I don't see it going a lot lower than that. People are still putting things up for all variety of reasons. Yep, yep. But the people who can avoid doing so are, and I think that's what we've seen. I we're down into the January levels when we were at a really slow point in the market. Mm -hmm. It's actually basically come down to right where we were at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. And for reference, uh, we don't have this data up. I think we shared this in a previous studio space. That late December, uh, early January level. Yeah. Lowest event in 2019. That's really the lowest we see. Yeah. So this this is on board there, and I think that's kind of the situation we're in. Yeah. And Dan, I really, I really appreciate hearing your uh, comparison to the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020. Uh, because as as the stay at home order was put in place, uh, folks in real estate were saying, uh, this is going to feel like a, a protracted uh, winter time, right? So, so real estate in Michigan is cyclical outside of pandemics. Real estate is cyclical in Michigan because of weather. Um, we get to the Thanksgiving season and I don't want to say things shut down. That's not the right term there, but things slow down precipitously. It, it People pull themselves out of the market as purchasers and as sellers for two reasons specifically. Number one is the holidays. People are like, I don't want to deal with the public coming in and out of my house as sellers while I've got family here for celebrations and friends for parties and stuff like that. And then the flip side, buyers pull themselves out of the marketplace typically because no one wants to move in the middle of the winter. If you've got you know six inches of snow on the ground, who wants to move out of a house or into a house at that point in time? So because of seasonality, we see that cyclical nature of real estate here in the state of Michigan. So I really do appreciate your analogy to, hey, these numbers look very similar to the beginning of January, the end of December of last year. Um, and I think that's a good thing for folks to, to be mindful of. There are still homes coming onto the market, yes. Uh, and as you pointed out, Dan, there are a variety of reasons for that to happen. We yeah. were talking about one of those scenarios before we started recording here, uh, that someone's got a, a relocation transfer and their particular package, um, it, it has a 60 day time limit to it. And at the end of 60 days, if the property hasn't sold, their package, their transfer, uh, their relocation package is such that the relocation company then buys them out and allows them to, to move along or at least frees them up to move along to purchase their next place. And some folks just want to get that clock started regardless of the amount of foot traffic that they will not see uh, during the stay at home time here in the state of Michigan. Yeah, it's it's been a little bit it's been a little bit spooky not being able to leave the house and still continuing <laughs> business. Um, yeah. I, I I can tell you for myself, I've still got transactions that are that are coming up to closing in the next few weeks. Yep. They're Continuing as they would otherwise, we're having to have conversations about how we're doing walkthroughs and how we're addressing different things. Yep. Um, well, like some of the some of the contractors that we had had brought in are not able to perform now by closing, and so that's impacting us. Mm -hmm. And really, there's there's some concern about how exactly we're getting to closing, but at this point, it's something we can't overcome. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think that's a key point right there, Dan, is the, the transactions that are in process. So the purchases, the uh, purchase agreements that are in place that are marching their way towards closing uh, here in the state of Michigan, at least, you know, financial services are deemed essential. Real estate agents are not a part of financial services, but lenders and title companies are. So they may continue to conduct business. 
albeit in a very different fashion than we're used to. Uh, and so those those transactions that are in process and marching their way towards closing, yeah, you know what? Some of your contractors may not be able to come out because they're deemed non-essential at this point in time. The reality is, as you just spoke, Dan, uh, we have the ability to, uh, I don't want to say think linearly, right? We're still aiming towards the closing, right? We're, we're still going to that closing table, but we're, we have to think differently or tend tangentially uh, yeah. to uh, the process so that we can solve something that we've never had to solve before. Um, and that's, for me at least, that's part of what makes real estate uh, kind of a lot of fun, not trying to solve problems like we're in right now, but problem solving period. We, we know what the goal is and if everybody's on the same path to that same goal, then it's easy enough to talk through the process, like doing walkthroughs. You know, how is how do I as a listing agent talk with a buyer's agent to say, yeah, you know what, prior to closing, your buyers still have the right to walk through that property and check things out. Um, maybe, maybe we make some Clorox wipes and Purell available and just say, we're gonna wipe everything down before we leave. You guys do the same and agents, just be on the phone with your clients as they're walking through the property. Something along those lines, right? Essentially. Yeah. And what what we're doing here is going back to the winter analogy. This last December, we still had a lot of contracts in our team, Studio 48, carrying through into the winter, into the slow yep. selling season. But we weren't getting a lot of new business in as things were kind of slow. Mm -hmm. Very reminiscent here. After yep. that, it's, but it, like you mentioned, it's cyclical, mm -hmm. and that never really truly died off. It tapered, yep. but it built right back up as we came into January. Yep, yep. Yeah, we we I, really had we really we really had a short downtime this year. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen here, especially as. Uh, I think the sh there's a lot of rumors about the shelter in place being continued until the end of April. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's prudent. Um, I'm personally very much in favor of that. But it's going to do a very similar thing to the market, mm -hmm. but for a longer period. But there, there, there will be a drying up yeah. uh, of the market that's protracted, that we're not necessarily as prepared for as winter would have. Yeah, I and I, I tend to agree with that, Dan. Um, and and so one of the things, and that segue is really nice, actually, into uh, an article that you and I were were kind of kibitzing over, um, talking about um, the economic recession um, and you know how rough is it going to be, how long is it going to last, is it going to be a U uh, recovery, is it going to be a V recovery, is it going to be a W recovery, um, and those are all uh, terms to describe what the chart looks like on the recovery, right? So I, uh, I think. Bloomberg published an article that proposed both an L and a Nike swoosh. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> I'm oh, hoping for a hockey stick. I, oh. <laughs> I, I, I like that the Nike swoosh made the title of the article. It's Yeah, that's not bad for Nike. Holy moly. <laughs> not, not bad at all. Oh, but my goodness. Th this article we're talking about uh, is from MarketWatch. The mm -hmm. good folks over at MarketWatch, we've talked about uh, some things they've put out before. This is going to be a protracted yeah. recovery. There's, there's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think they mentioned in that article as well, much like the disease recovery itself, we've got, do this in reverse. <laughs> it's a little bit trippy. We've it got is. the curve. As we come down the other side of that curve, as the infection rates fall, isolation works. We're coming down. Things get lifted. Peaks back up. Sanctions get put back in place. We're down again, and it kind of bounces back and forth into a stabilized mm -hmm. result. Markets are likely to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. now, it's going to be a little bit more protracted because yep. employment isn't immediately going to shoot back up, and then. Well, and and I think there's a there's a big distinction to throw out here too, Dan. So, and, and I've been harping on this for a little bit. Uh, with uh, not just my colleagues, but but also uh, consumers, there's a big disconnect between what happens in the economy and what happens to the housing market. Um, oh, absolutely. In, in the last five economic recessions, so please hear those terms, economic recession. In the last five economic recessions, only twice in those economic recessions has housing taken a hit in value. So let me repeat that. In the last five economic uh, recessions only twice has the um, 
has the housing value, uh, house appreciation value taken a hit? Uh, obviously, in 2008, housing took a gigantic hit. It was off by 20% across the country. And it led the recession. So it was the reason for the recession economically that hit us. And then the time before that, I want to say was 1991, uh, when there was an economic recession. And at that point in time, at that recession, housing lost only like 1.9% in, in value. All the other uh, recessions, uh, going back to, I think, 81, uh, all the other ones saw increases anywhere from 3 to 6% in, in a Oh, very good. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually said this. Um, I, I had another buyer this week, lost quite a chunk of change in the stock market, yeah. and is a little bit spooked um, by the real estate market. Mm -hmm. They they see it as buying high right now uh, mm -hmm. before the inevitable crash, which I I tend to disagree with. We don't know the future, right? Uh, but we do know what data has shown us before, right? And so I'm going to pull this. Up really quickly. Yeah. I should have it right. Downloads and, and similar to to purchasers that you're working with, Darren, Dan. Um, I, I had a conversation with a seller uh, earlier this week, uh, where they were trying. They were asking my advice. What do you think is going to happen? We would like to come on market ASAP, but we know that there's no foot traffic right now. Nobody can go through our house. Uh, but we're concerned about when we come on the market, uh, once uh, everyone can travel, you know, will we see values drop because of the recession? And I counsel them in a very similar fashion to what we just talked about, about the recessions and, and property values going the opposite direction. Where I think the discussion about the, the W-shaped recovery that, that you referenced is coming is it goes right back to employment. It goes right back to we've got X number of people that have either been laid off or furloughed. Uh, and we're basically, we've, we spun down our economy. What happens when we're able to go back to work and people need to now move again? They want to go purchase a house. You know, typically lenders look at your income and they look at your expenses and they, they want to see a period of time that you've been employed. I have to think, don't know this, but I have to think that given the um, extreme times that we've been living in right now, that there will be an exception made out that says, hey, look, with the exception of this period in time in 2020, were you employed gainfully before? Yes. Were you employed gainfully immediately after? Yes. Okay. You know what? We're going to put an exception right here and we're going to go ahead and, and go ahead with approving you for a mortgage for this particular property because with this extreme exception, you would be you would have been an excellent credit risk for us. Ah, I, I think I, I think the distinction there, um, and you make a very good point there, and we're actually seeing that mirrored in education. Uh, all of the UC schools are waiving uh, SAT yeah. scores and some grade requirements for the next two application years. Yeah. As a result of this, recognizing that students cannot be expected to complete these things that they otherwise would be. Yeah. The yeah. difference, I think, in approval is going to be unemployment. Yep. Um, the, the, the biggest thing there is that if you kept your job through this, I absolutely agree. The odds of a lender looking at that and saying, there was a big exception here. Yeah. We, we understand the situation. You're still gainfully employed. I think we can make this work. There's yeah. going to be a difference if you've lost your job in this and you don't have that same consistent income or situation you did before. Absolutely. And so that's there. I definitely wouldn't. Um, count on that too much if you yep. are in that position. Yep. No, I agree with you. That that's a very good good point to to make there. And thank you, Dan, for sharing that graphic about the the past five recessions. That that's a good one to to reference and get burnt uh, in into our brains because it's again we don't know. Our crystal balls are cracked and muddy. We have no idea what's coming, but we can certainly look backwards and say, ah, based on prior experience, here's what we can expect. Um, now, are, are things different? Yeah, some things are different. Are fundamentals different? I tell you what, the fundamentals in 2020 are drastically different than the fundamentals in 2008, 2007, when, when we had the giant giant crash. Um, we don't have the, that same, uh, we don't have that same uh, perfect storm, so to speak, uh, brewing right now, which is good. So, I don't know, man. It, this, these are interesting times. I keep using that phrase, interesting times. I it, It's fascinating to experience you're 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 not alone and you're not <laughs> wrong in that we have a very weird situation that's going on very right now so. 
the best thing we can do with with the cards that have been laid out in front of us is to keep marching forward. Yep. yep. I, I can't change that I'm trapped at home. I'm talking uh, to people who are coming to our website searching for homes. Mm -hmm. They're first time home buyers. Most of them are looking at this as an opportunity. Yep. Uh, they, for one, it's an opportunity to sit online and browse through Zillow. <laughs> uh, which I, I take the same opportunity. I do it for work, but it still like fulfills that. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're going online and looking at, you know, this is the next stage in life. Mm -hmm. People tend to be in such a rush. They're not, when they come to us for the most part, they're not pre-approved. Mm -hmm. They're not along in the process. They just recognize I need to buy a house X, yep. Y reason. And they're coming along and they don't have the time to necessarily invest in that process. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll be the first one to tell buyers it's an investment of your time. Yep. Buying yep. a house is going to take time from yep. you, from your loved ones, from, from your agent. This is an investment. Yep. And now that a lot of folks have the opportunity to put in that time, I'm seeing a lot more people coming prepared having, you know, may, maybe they're not going to the best sources, but you know, they're at least going online and looking at quick and loans and seeing what they qualify for mm -hmm. as part of this process. It's become a little bit more cohesive, which is, is very interesting for me. Yeah. You know, and Dan, one of the things that I saw recently that, that I think runs in a similar vein to what you just expressed, uh, there was a post in one of the social media feeds that I'm watching. Uh, and it said something along the lines of, if at the end of this quarantine, you haven't learned a new side hustle, a new skill, read books, or uh, done something different, the issue has not been time. It's just been drive. And I think... I, think I, I, think, I think we're all doing something different. I, <laughs> I, that's a little bit of gimme. You've got to admit that. Yeah. No, and I, I, but I think it fits, right? So this is prime time, as you're pointing out with first-time homebuyers. This is prime time for first-time homebuyers to get educated, to get prepared, and to get ready. Because again, when the housing market is uh, unfrozen, when it thaws, so to speak, my gut tells me it's going to move pretty rapidly. Um, and are we going to see appreciation rates through the roof? I'm not going to call that one just yet. I just think that the pent up demand and the pent up inventory is going to hit at about the same time and things are going to move pretty rapidly. So having your ducks in a row prior to the, the go being shouted, so to speak, is going to be great. So, you know, talking with your professionals, your lenders and your real estate agents and being able to review what's on the market currently, even though you can't necessarily see it in person, knowing what's uh, available currently sets you up extremely well for when the ban is lifted and we can get right back to business. I, I think this speaks very well to the attitude of consumers right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, gen generally, after I, I have a consultation with somebody, they first come to me, talk about what they're looking for in a house, what, how, how I might be able to help them. I generally send them away with some paperwork to look at. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a pretty standard practice. I know you do the same thing, mm -hmm. but we want, we want everybody to be on the same page. Mm -hmm. I don't think most people read that, to be entirely honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> no. They, they should. Mm -hmm. I encourage them to have your attorney look at it. These are contracts. Mm -hmm. I have no obligation to, and I'm not confident that a lot of people do. This totally. is the first time this week I got a call back. I, I, I sent this buyer, you know, a whole bunch of things. I'm like, page four of this purchase agreement. I have questions about this. this That's line. awesome. Is, how are we using this? Like, I, I've never been asked that question before, I don't know, a week before closing. What <laughs> The buyer is finally looking at the contract. I, I was just very impressed by that. Like people have the time mm -hmm. to do things the right way now. Yep. No, I agree with you, Dan. I agree with you. And I, I love, I love the ability to slow down here. If there is a, a huge silver lining in, in what we're going through right now, it really has slowed the pace of life uh, to the point where we have a better, we have a, we have an easier ability to stare at the details that we need to stare at, not just in things like contracts either. And so just kind of going off of that and going into life in general, it's been nice to be slower. It's been nice to be more present uh, than, than we have when uh, when the, the brakes are off, so to speak. So 
Yeah, not, I, don't, I think that's a great observation, and it's poignant too. <laughs> People have more time. Yep. I I can't say I do. I'm looking forward to the day that I do. <laughs> uh, things have been a little bit weirdly. I'm busier now yeah. than I was before. Yep. And I, I I'm getting a little bit jealous. Like I I had time to set. You know, I I have a semi permanent studio in my house now that didn't <laughs> exist before. I'll give you that. But you know, I'm still running with audiobooks and not like turning through pages. Like mm -hmm. it's it's still a little bit of a hustle. Oh, it is. Yeah, I, it, I have not it, had a chance to relax yet. Uh, and I and and Dan, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I haven't exactly slowed down myself. It's just been replaced. I mean, I haven't put like thousands and thousands of miles on my vehicle. Um, what I've done is I've put hours and hours into video conferences, uh, learning as well as with clients and and some hand holding along the way, advising the folks that are going to be clients. Uh, so yeah, you're right. What I what I've appreciated is that uh, at least for me. Uh, my whole family is is home. Like I don't have to drive somewhere to pick somebody up to bring them home or take them to another event. We have the ability to like when I close the lid on my laptop here, I'm going to go have dinner, and it's going to be dinner with the four of us sitting around a table, uh, which we've struggled to do. And so I appreciate what this um, this opportunity has given us, at least as a family, to be able to execute. So for me, that's where my my being present kind of kind of comes out. We still have our routines, like we still have to do our work. My wife still has to do her work, um, but it's great to be able to work on opposite sides of the house, bump into each other for coffee, for lunch and breakfast, and and then dinner with the entire family. This is this is good stuff. So <laughs> it's it's impressive what you can do. You, you and I both have pretty sizable commutes mm -hmm. on a regular basis, and and working in real estate, we drive a lot. That's yes, just what we do. It's been it's been interesting to see how that time gets filled, yeah. like what yeah. what your default is, what what you go to with that time. Because I my my driver is podcasts and audiobooks. If yeah. I'm driving, I really only listen to music when I work out. If gotcha. I if I'm doing anything else, it's a podcast. I'm learning something. I'm capitalizing on that time. I'm three weeks behind on podcasts right now. <laughs> <laughs> that I have actually spent on podcasts and audiobooks was driving. And it's been it's been interesting to see how your priorities change when your situation changes. Yeah. Well, it's funny because this is the year that at the beginning of the year, I had made a concerted effort to get on board with audiobooks, trying to figure out how to listen to them. Look, I'm a page turner. I love books. I love picking them up and flipping through. And so many people had told me, audiobooks, audiobooks, get into those podcasts. I'm like, geez, I'm Pete. Somebody made a great suggestion, and I think you shared it with me, or somebody else shared it with me as well. Just jack up the rate, uh, the 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 speech rate. So instead of real time, jack it up to like 1.5, 1.7 times, and that's made all the difference. Uh, and so at the beginning of the year, started downloading audiobooks from the library, started loading up on the podcasts, and similar to you, Dan, um, in the car, that's what I'm listening to. I tell you what, quarantine, I'm like, oh, bugger. I've got these these uh, audiobooks coming in from the library. Crap, i got to figure out how to listen to them. <laughs> so, shameless plug. Uh, if, if you listen to podcasts, Pocket Casts yes. does a fantastic job. I, yeah. I know I got you on board with them a little bit, uh, a little while ago. I, I don't know how I ever use anything else. And they've got this fun stats page. Mm -hmm. By using variable speed, by increasing the speed, I have saved five days <laughs> of podcast listening. That's awesome. <laughs> since the middle of 2017, but still, that's five days. Five days. Holy smokes. That five days out of, and, and this, this is a little bit frightening, too. Since May 16th of 2017, I'm on 75 days and 18 hours wow. of podcasts consumed. Jeez, so that's how much driving, that's how much driving I've done in the last three yeah. years. Yeah. Well, Dan, this is good stuff, and I love um, I love the frank discussion too about personal habits and and where we we find and consume yeah. media. This is good stuff. Um, I've got the link for Marketplace uh, article here. That I'm pointing up to my secondary screen here. Um, the podcasts um, Pocket Casts app. And service, I will uh, grab that link as well and throw that in here. Um, 
I think that does it for uh, the week of, let's see, what is this, March 30th? Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. Hang on. Let, let me check the chalk marks on the wall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mine aren't so much chalk marks yeah. as they are like me with a knife trying to carve initials into the side of a tree or something, right? This is day 17. <laughs> Just trying to dig your way out. Exactly. I feel like Shawshank Redemption here. I don't know. <laughs> Spoiler <Wow>. alert. Sorry. <laughs> Too soon. Sorry. Wait, it's, it's a 25 year old movie. It's it not so good. It's so good. You hey, know Shawshank Redemption by now? Uh, yeah. Well, you brought this. Th this is true. If you haven't seen it by now, you brought it upon yourself. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. You know, now, if you share Tiger King spoilers, no. you're going to have a problem. I ain't watching that thing. No, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> hey, Dan, it was good to see your face today uh, and chat with you a little bit. Um, uh, thank you for bringing some solid uh, data about the Washtenaw County housing market. Those numbers and that chart is uh, something else. We'll share that as well here in the show notes. Um, we're going to uh, put out a call for questions that uh, maybe viewers would like answered. We're going to try to get that out there a few days in advance uh, of when we uh, shoot something like this. So um, if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much for hanging out. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, Dan and I are going to figure out how to rotate in uh, the other partners, uh, Sarah Maddock and Jeffrey Post, into uh, studio spaces here. Because, you know, we kind of got to get them in here, too. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit of behind the scenes. Um, one of our colleagues, Jeffrey Post, we had a, a concept for an episode we wanted to bring him in. And not super relevant to the market right now for that particular episode. Yeah. I still think it would be a good conversation to have. Absolutely. For, Absolutely. for when that's relevant. You know, yeah. we can revisit it. That was a very special circumstance that Jeffrey yep. found himself in. And <laughs> I think that there is sharing. Just I never seen anything really like it. Yep. I agree with you. I agree with you. All righty. Well, Dan, good to see you, sir. Thank you so much. Um, this is Todd Waller. That's Dan Carrillo. Uh, we're with Studio 48 at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Snyder and Company uh, in the Ann Arbor, uh, in, the, in the city of Ann Arbor, in Ann Arbor. Um, and if you made it this far, thank you so much. We appreciate you. And we will see you next week. Take it easy. Take care, everybody.